you dancing right now I don't need to tell you that you know how But baby, you do Oh. Hey y'all, it's your girl Dana Michelle If you're new and if you're a returning subscriber Welcome back to the channel Hey y'all, so I'm back um, with another part of the update of what the heck has been going on where you been at girl your girl is single <laughs> single for the summer no i'm just kidding your girl single and i mean breakups are never easy they're never easy to talk about but i want to share um that's the purpose of this channel so as you guys know um i was in a relationship uh that started july of last year and it just took off um however life be life in okay and it became very difficult um as many of you guys know the relationship was long distance so he lives in fort worth and i'm here in the san antonio area um and in the beginning this long distance wasn't ideal for either one of us but at least for me if that's where my man is that's where my man is and we just gonna make it work that's kind of where my head was at and i think he was kind of hesitant about the long distance but was open to to giving it a shot i'm just gonna say in my opinion um and after processing things and i'm still processing things with my therapist and just within myself something that is very apparent uh, especially when you're of a more mature age dating like me i'm 42 he's in his 50s everybody has traumas everybody's been through something you can't expect somebody to not have been through something especially in their 40s and 50s so i will just say that I have relationship traumas. One thing that I don't handle well is confrontation and conflict. Um, and I, I do realize that I need to work on that because my go-to when I feel conflict or anger, I just don't like that. It makes me physically uncomfortable. I just remove myself. And some may say, well, good for you remove yourself from that situation but sometimes re removing myself isn't always the best thing sometimes i do feel excuse me i do feel like i need to learn how to how to communicate in those situations because for me just from past experiences when my ex-husband used to yell at me when he used to cuss at me when he used to be talking down to me that in that negative energy i would physically break out into hives i would hyperventilate and so whenever i'm faced with conflict and anger and just that that type of energy my first response is to is just to back back because i don't even want to entertain that um so that's my relationship trauma his relationship trauma well one of them that i'm very aware of is um uh he doesn't like somebody to be silent because in past experiences he had experienced like they would be living in the same house and they would not talk to each other for weeks and just walk by each other like they were invisible um some other things did come up in the relationship i was accused of entertaining other men because i'm so good at juggling things and who's to know if i was entertaining somebody else just other things that came up that pretty much sums up that my trauma and his trauma just did not mesh okay it just didn't and because neither one of us are completely healed from our traumas there were situations that kept coming up that kept bringing up his trauma and my trauma and his responses and my responses just it just wasn't it just wasn't working and for me um it got to the point um and this was all going on while I'm in the thick of dealing with stuff with Kyra, she's in the hospital. It just, it's, it was a lot. So um, I want to say it was a Friday night, maybe two, three weeks ago. 
uh, he and I had just had like a heated disagreement and it wasn't resolved. We kind of just took a pause. And that night I prayed. I don't know if you guys follow Peyton Charles on YouTube, but I follow her and I just want to say, I love the realness of her. I really do. And it just so happened that that night I happened to catch a live that she did. And she was letting all her followers know that she had just had a breakup. And she said something in this live. And when she said it, I knew it personally to be true. And she pretty much just said, one prayer that you can pray to God and you better believe he gonna answer that prayer real quick, especially if you mean that from the bottom of your heart. And it's that prayer of God, if this person is not meant for me, if this isn't who you have for me, I ask you to remove them quickly from my life. And when she said that in the live, I immediately was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take this to God because I'm up here stressing about this relationship. I'm already stressing about, you know, my kid being in the hospital. I've already got enough stuff. Let me just take this one thing off of my shoulders and hand it to God. So literally that night, I prayed and I said, God, you know, I love this man, but if this is not for me, if he is not who you have for me at this point in my life or at all, I ask you to please remove him quickly. And I did it and I let it go. Y'all that next morning on Saturday, I received a long text message from him. And just to sum it up, he was pretty much just saying that he didn't want to do it no more that he was done, he just to sum it up. And as at the mo very moment that I read that text, I, I, I was just like, all right, God, then I guess that's your answer. So I responded to him and just said, you know what? You're right, I respect it, wished him all the best. And that was it. Now, the way that I handle breakup, I delete, I block. I do all the things because if we're done, especially at this grown age, we all have, we all make decisions and every decision we make has a consequence. If you come to me and tell me you ain't, if you ain't fooling with me, you're not feeling me. I respect it. I wish you all the best. There is nothing left for us. So at that very moment, moment when I sent him the message and said, I understand, I respect it. You're right. Whatever. Go with God, whatever. I deleted his number. His I couldn't tell you what his phone number is. I deleted his contact. I delete. I blocked on everything, and I was done. Because what else is there left to say after all the things that have? And there have been some things that have been said that even if I were to entertain the thought of doubling back, which I do not do. There was no way that I could honestly and wholeheartedly move forward without those things still being in my head because it comes from somewhere, you know, and he had made a comment like when couple when people are arguing or in the heat of the moment, you know, people say things and throw things out. I don't throw things out. If I say it, I mean it. I, I don't I'm very careful with my words. Now, there may be a time where I may say something and it is interpreted wrong. But I don't throw stuff out. I don't throw jabs. I don't do, I don't, I'm not a person like that. Because if I throw a jab, that's probably the only jab I got. And if you throw one back, I ain't gonna have nothing else. So I don't even play that game. Cause that's not, that's not my gift or my ministry is back and forth. It's not. Um, but we did have a lot, a lot, a lot of communication issues. Um, and I'm still working through that because I don't, I still don't understand the way we communicate it just completely different that I'll just say that I like to ask a lot of questions because I like to, I like to understand. I don't like to leave room for assuming. I don't like to leave room for question. So I will ask questions until I have an understanding. And I guess for some people asking questions for clarity is annoying or is a it's just not for them and that was we just had communicate communication issues and um and then back to the distance 
we ultimately wanted to join our lives together and um, moving to Fort Worth was an idea um, that he especially wanted to happen pretty quickly. However, with what I have going on in my life here, although I was very open to that, um, making that happen wasn't going to be something that was just going to happen like super fast. You know what I'm saying? Like I have my daughters here and I'm their caregiver that will require finding them doctors up there and reestablish. Like that's a lot. And then not even including the fact that, you know, I would have to find another job and my whole support system is here. Um, it, it was just a lot of moving pieces on my end. And I don't think that, um, Ultimately, especially with what's currently going on with Kyra, um, which would have prolonged us relocating anyway, I don't. I think at some point, no matter what, it would have become too much for him. Like he would have become too impatient, or whatever the case may be, because that was not going to happen as quickly as um, desired. So. All in all, you guys, um, I'm single and I'm okay with that. It sucks. Um, it, it does suck, but I learned things about myself. Um, I've become even more, more, more clear on <laughs> what I want, um, things to ask up front, what to do up front, what not to do up front. Moving forward, I will say this, um, and I'm not even thinking about dating right now. I I got too much. I got my girls. I got. I'm in school. I have my job. I have my doula business. I have so many things. So a man is the last thing on my mind. But I do know that the next time. I'm presented with a budding friendship relationship. It will start strictly with a friendship. Moving forward, I just, I won't be sharing myself, my energy, anything of me with anyone um, unless I know for sure that this is gonna be a nurturing, loving, uh, growing relationship. I just, I don't, yeah. And also moving forward, super, super red flag. If you're against therapy, if you've never been to therapy or you're not even open to therapy, we can't, we just can't at all. And that's friendships too, because I need to be around people who are actively participating in their healing. Period, 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 period. Um, so yeah, you guys, I, um, I'm single, I'm at peace, I'm good, I'm looking forward to the future. I know in the past, um, my view on relationship, on partnership, on marriage was completely different. And today... Today, I have different feelings. One thing that's different is that, do I want to live my life alone? Absolutely not. But I know that with a partner or without a partner, that the life that I desire is attainable. And that gives me so much peace. Um, and also, and I don't know how you guys feel about this. Definitely share this with me share your thoughts with me about this in the comments, but I've been hearing different conversations a lot lately about relationships, friendships, no matter any kind of relationship. And I don't know what's right or wrong, but for me, I know that men love to be needed. Um, but at the point at the point that I'm at in my life, I don't I don't feel like it's healthy to need 
anyone. I think that we should all be self self-sufficient. We should all love ourselves ourselves. We should have enough self-love. We should be self-sufficient. We should be confident enough. We don't need anyone. I, for one, that puts so much pressure on someone else or for someone to need me. That puts a lot of pressure. Now, granted, when you're a parent and you have kids, yes, your child's livelihood is dependent upon you. That's different. But in relationships, I want somebody who wants me and wakes up every day and chooses me. I don't want somebody to be with me because they need a roof over their head or because they need a body to lay next to or because they need, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of pressure. And I don't want to need anybody and I don't want anybody to need me. I want to be in relationship with people who choose my energy, choose my joy, choose my smile, choose my flaws, who choose me, not me. You know what I'm saying? That's just where I'm at right now, y'all. So um, I just wanted to share with you guys a um, little update on my life. And I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted. Um, but yeah. There will be more updates because there's a lot going on, y'all. But until next time, peace and blessings. Peace, y'all. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Dana Michelle. If you're new and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, please comment, like this video, y'all. And if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and join the family. Y'all, so last night, um, Cammy and I went to this open mic night at this um, place here in San Antonio, and it was pretty cool. Uh, we got there a little bit early because we wanted to make sure we had a seat, and when we got to the venue, they were hosting um, a live recording for, I guess, a local podcast or whatever, and... Um, on the panel was uh, two men and a young lady. They all seemed to be like 25, between the ages of 25 and maybe like 30, 32. Um, so they were fairly young. But of course, the conversation that they were having uh, was that of relationships. And um, they were talking about a whole lot of stuff, but one part of the conversation that really was alarming and stuck out to me and to Cammy, granted, Cammy's 20, I'm 42. So yes, we're both women, but we both have different experiences and different perspectives. Um, and then we also share the same views on some parts too. Um, but the one of the parts of the conversation that was that really s still I keep thinking about it and y'all feel like my lash is about to come off um <laughs> one of the things that really stuck out was the guy talking about when he meets a woman um you know it's the whole what do you bring to the table type conversation and I personally, and I don't know, I'm, I'm just talking this through with y'all. So definitely share your thoughts and your opinions on this in the comments and let's, let's chat about it. But I honestly feel like in this day and age, the reason why people even have to ask why women feel they have to ask a man what he's bringing and why a man has the audacity to ask a woman what she's bringing is because we are not we are not communicating we are um in relationships and trying to build these powerhouse relationships with people that we're not even equally yoked with people that we're not even on the same moral level with people that we don't even know what their goals are we don't know who they are we don't know what their passion is what their purpose is we don't know where they're going if you know where somebody is going if you know who this person is and they you and in return 
there will be no need for those questions about what do you bring to the table because in those conversations you would know yeah this this is where I'm going this is where I'm going in life this is my mission this is my purpose and in knowing that person and learning that person you will know if this person is gonna be able to support you and be your helpmate and help you build you will know if y'all's purposes align so there's no need if you're really aligned with somebody and you're really getting to know somebody you don't need to ask them what they're bringing to the table because their fruit will show in their life and their personality how they interact with their family their friends um how they are about themselves do they love themselves are they confident do they believe in themselves i feel like those things show you what's on their table show you what comes with them shows you what type of help mate they will be shows you if they're going to be supportive shows you if you want to be a part of their life you know what i'm saying i don't know that just really stuck stuck to me and cammy and i were while we were at this place last night we were both like this is very like this is very sad it's very sad that um men and women are kind of on two different times men are trying to get their their rocks knocked off um, or they're looking for somebody to take care of them. They're looking for mothers. And they're not only are they looking for mothers, they're looking for mothers. They're looking uh, for strippers. They're looking for sex workers. They're looking for cooks. They're looking for therapists. They're looking for all the things. Um, and women, yes, a lot of us are looking for a come up. We're looking for that soft life. We are looking for, um, we're looking for that old school relationship, but we don't want to be old school. Um, and so that's why dating is just, it's just horrible. It's horrible. And the number one issue, in my opinion, is the communication. There, there's, there's a lack of communication and there's a lack of respect for just human beings period but i of course am a, a woman and i'm a black woman so i can only speak from the perspective of a woman and um i don't care what you say black women are the most hated human beings on this planet hands down and then i would say black men next but hands down a black woman is the most hated on the most misunderstood the most uh, just underappreciated human being on the planet and I could just sum it up by this yes black men black men have it hard you go out here y'all are beat down by the world you know people look at you and they automatically see a monster just because of who you are and the power that lies within you and I get it um, and you know white men may reject you uh, corporate America may reject you all these different but you know what white women don't reject you white women are waiting for you okay white women will take you and and your seeds and and to better their their family their generation their lineage that's that's one group of uh people who will not reject you black men um but for a black woman we're rejected by everybody we're paid we we are we're we're rejected by the white man we're rejected by the white woman we're rejected by corporate america we're rejected by our own we're, we're our own black men these days don't even want us and don't want to understand us and don't want to not even understand us but black men y'all know good and damn well that your brothers ain't taking care of business and i'm not saying all black men but you know that there are some you were raised by a single mom so you know that the black man in general not all has not been taking care of his business so why act surprised that there are so many black women out here who have had to put their softness to the side who have had to put their gentleness to the side and who have had to boss up who have had to man up 
and go toe to toe with men sometimes to to survive in this world. I don't. I. I is it ideal? Absolutely not. And what the world has done to a lot of black women is very sad. Um, but why? 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 black men try to act like they don't know you were raised by that same single black woman so how do you not know how do you and that's the thing the world puts so much pressure on black women because on one one end of the spectrum everybody wants to be the black woman you want the curves you want the beautiful bronze skin you want the confidence you want the movement in our hips you you know you want our passion you want you want it right you want it but then on the other end you hate us because you know god forbid you're a, a beautiful black woman who is confident who is strong who can speak passionately who can speak up for herself who knows how to get stuff done with or without a man if she does not have one god forbid you're that woman then you're deemed angry you're deemed oh you're too masculine or you this or or you don't need a man but then when we do need a man for the woman that does need a man then oh you're too clingy oh you need to make your own money oh you oh you a gold digger which is it it's so freaking confusing it's so confusing it's so confusing so my message to i'm gonna speak to my to my sisters y'all we have got to we've got to continue to do the work on ourselves because the world today will try to tell you who you are what you are you have got to know who you are and that means the good the bad and the ugly for instance yes i know i know that i have a great heart i know that i'm a nurturer i i love big but at the same time, um, I don't know how to communicate through conflict. I'll just, I, I, know, I know who I am and I know my flaws, I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses. And when you know who you are, that, that helps like get rid of all kinds of unnecessary issues. Because when you know who you are, you're not going to sit and let somebody tell you about yourself when you know. But at the same time, when you know who you are, when someone is telling you about yourself and you be like, you know what? You show sure right. You right about it. I know because I know me. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and that requires us doing work. That requires us doing work. So I just went on this whole rant because your girl's newly single again um and i just want to be a good human being like and honestly you guys i struggle i so badly i want to be in a relationship that is founded in friendship friendship um but i've really found that very hard um it's it's hard and especially it's hard for me too because I am a, a SA survivor and I was SA'd by someone who was titled my best, one of my best friends. He SA'd me. And so although that was like an amazing friendship aside from the SA, there is a part of me that still desires that type of friendship. But then there's also a part of me that's terrified of that. And there's also a part of me that's like, I don't even know if that's even possible. Um, but I don't know. I bought me a new journal from Target. And I today I'm going to take the time to revisit my list of characteristics and qualities that I desire and feel that I need in my partner and in my man and I'm going to um, I'm going to revisit the list I'm going to take some stuff off I'm going to add some stuff I'm just going to revisit it all because um, I'm not in a hurry for marriage I'm not in a hurry for partnership I'm not in a hurry for anything but at the same time I, I'm not wasting my time either period I'm just I'm not wasting my time so 
um more to come on that you guys i just wanted to share that with you because that that whole experience listening to those um those people yesterday at that live podcast i was just like wow like we and i'm and i'm not excluding myself from it at all we are some hurt individuals we are some hurt individuals we are some wounded birds out here and um yeah we got to get help and that's exactly why um as i continue to do my own personal self-improvement i want to be surrounded with people who are also actively working on their self-improvement because we're all going to change we're all going to grow but as long as we're all working on ourselves together i feel like that would make the best situation for friendships partnerships marriage whatever um and that's just where i'm at y'all that's where i'm at and i'm still happy i'm happy um and it's that's another thing and i know i don't want to be too long-winded but it is okay to be happy in your singleness that doesn't mean that that's that's what your end goal is but it's okay to, to find joy and find contentment and find peace where you're at. It's a journey, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna continue to remind myself that it's okay to enjoy being single. It's okay to enjoy the process of learning more about yourself. It's okay to try to find joy in the process of going weeding through stuff. It's okay. It's a part of the journey, and I intend to enjoy every part of this journey and every journey that I'm on, even the hard stuff. I am determined to find the joy in everything, and I will not allow any circumstance to throw me off track um, of becoming my better self. So that's it that's all i will talk to y'all later i'm on my way to see my baby um, at the hospital and i hope y'all have a great day and we'll catch up soon with that list and if y'all are single um let's work on it together let's let's make a, let's work on our list let's work on ourselves together let's just be better humans period i love y'all i'll talk to y'all later peace see you dancing right now I don't need to tell you that you know how, but baby, you do, oh, I said you belong, and if you dream to be free, I can take you there, just follow me, baby, I won't, huh.